everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. We'll get to that emotional fallout of right to work later on in the program. But compared to this issue, it's a blip on the radar. Month after month, year after year, New Hampshire's deadly crisis of addiction remains the biggest issue facing the state, according to its residents. So what kind of progress is being made? I am joined this morning by the state's point man in the fight, a.k.a. the New Hampshire drug czar, James Vera. Good to see you. And I know Thank that's you, not your official title, but the governor called you that during his budget address. That's what I'm going to go with. So how goes the battle? Sure. So uh, we've certainly made strides in the last 10 and a half months that I've had the job. I know it probably feels like more than yeah. 10 and a half certainly does for me, but we certainly have made strides. You know, we talk a lot about the money that we've spent as a state in the last year. It's a little over $30 million, but we don't always have the opportunity to talk about all the programs, be it prevention programs, treatment programs, recovery programs, and of course enforcement. Now let's start with the federal assistance of all this and the Cures Act. Uh, there's money that's uh, going to be delivered soon, we hope. I mean, we always have to wait and see how that goes, but the application is made under the Cures Act, six million bucks. Yeah, so the application actually was filed on Friday, uh, of which now we wait. So we hope for uh, in early spring, we'll know. But it's, it's been allocated in terms of in the actual application itself of what the state would receive, somewhat different than other federal grants, of which it will be about $6.2 million. So it appears the money is there. Research, maybe not enough, but there's more than there was. And that was uh, when you came into office, that's what everybody said. We need more resources. So it appears that there are resources. How are those dollars being applied? And what do you point to and say, you know what, this is where we're making progress and we're heading in the right direction? I think we're making progress in, in all the areas. But I think we should talk, too, really about supply and demand. You know, there's been a lot of conversation just about supply or just about demand. But we have to think about it really in those two areas, be it supply side and enforcement, which, uh, as you know, Granite Hammer, $1.5 million. That's been very successful. Uh, we also have uh, treatment programs throughout the state. There's 15 state funded, which have been, you know, we have, um, if you're looking at the numbers, certainly approximately 9,000 people are getting services in this state. Yeah, yeah, I want to ask you, because there was a point in time where if someone asked for help, they weren't necessarily getting it right away. Is that no, no longer the case? It's not, a per it's not a perfect system. We're building this you know, infrastructure in the midst of a crisis. Not the best time to be doing it. We're also doing it, you know, this is something that took us you know, I was a prosecutor uh, almost 12 years. We saw this happening 10 plus years ago. So this is not something that, you know, we want to make as best progress as we can, as quickly as we can. But this is not something that will be changed overnight. Sure. No, I, we've talked to you about the safe stations and the success of those programs. It's actually being used a lot uh, in other states now. Sure. Um, and that has been successful. But when, it talks, when we talk about information and coordination, is it better than it's ever been? better than it's ever been. We could even start about just on stigma, anti-stigma campaigns, which was just released in the state a little over two weeks ago. Even that, the conversation, and you certainly remember this, the conversation was not always about um, someone suffering with a disease and suffering, suffering with substance use disorder. It was something that was not talked about. We're beyond that point. Well, not only is it being talked about, it's what are the solutions to help someone who's in that crisis? And and mental health is a huge component to this. And uh, is that being talked about enough? I mean, it, get, it gets mentioned and it has been for a while, but you know, this leads to a lot of addiction for a lot of people. I'm very, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Sure. Cause that's something that is not talked about enough. You know, I go out, I went to the community mental health centers. I went and talked to them about this. We really have to change the conversation about that as well. Many of the people that they are seeing at the community mental health centers are using. And why are they using? They're using as a result of their mental health. Yeah. disease that they have and we have to do more certainly in that area is everybody forward. at the table now when it comes to this i mean the prescribers the doctors the medical community everybody's talking and everybody's rowing the, in the boat in the same direction definitely that's good that's good so uh the enforcement side of things is where you come from you just pointed out one thing that occurs to me i mean we hear a lot about drug busts and they they're called significant are we getting to the major kingpins or whatever i mean or are we still just kind of getting the the second tier drug dealers. I'm no longer in that field anymore, but I certainly can say they're making strides. You know, it's cash business. It's a, it's a billion dollar business. And you know, the cartels are really smart and they do things really well. But you know, we still have to go after the supply side. Yeah. Uh, moving forward now, and in, in, this is your second year on the job. During the governor's address, he said he's going to, uh, you're going to have some help now, uh, with basically a, a recovery uh, specialist. How important is that for what you're, you're trying to do? 
Certainly. Certainly the help will be much needed. You know, and it also really strikes a, a point of it's a pers person that's directly related to the recovery piece, which is, is exceptional to have in the office. Sure. Um, and education, as you mentioned, is key. And the governor said during his address, he said it during the campaign, he wants to get into the schools early, uh, start talking to these kids about addiction. How, what does that look like? Because, I mean, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around somebody going there talk, talking to my daughters about heroin and opioid and overdoses and things like that. Sure, it's certainly something that we have to use evidence-based practices. And there, there are things that are happening now in the school. They just have to be appropriate for the, for the child. But one thing we really have to think about is how, how old is, is really young enough to be having that conversation. Yeah. You know, many a times the conversation's happening way too late. And a lot of th these times, a lot of instances, these kids see this stuff yeah. firsthand. Um, as we move in, as we said, like to 2017, what's your, what's the next step? What's the next goal? I mean, kind of take us through that. Sure. So, you know, the conversation really has been about money and how we're using the money, but really now looking at targeted populations. So we need to continue what we've been funding before, making sure that they are, they, they, that they are excuse me, the appropriate programs. But not only that, looking at different sort of targeted populations, be that pregnant women, uh, those that are exiting uh, the justice system, uh, correctional facilities, also looking at housing, recovery housing, looking at that piece as well. And that's key because a lot of people get out of jail and they go home and fall right back into the same thing. Certainly. Same and we all would. You know, right. going back to the same, you know, air quote friends, you're going to go back into that. So the model we talked about is being built. How far away are we from where you want it to be? I mean, obviously you want the problem gone, but this is not going to be a one week fight, as we know. Not a quick fix, certainly. You know, I think it's going to take time. I think it's going to take, you know, all of us continuing, like you said, being at the table, having the conversation. You know, it's going to take time. The alcohol fund is something the governor talked about in his budget, uh, uh, doubled funding for it, I think, but uh, others say, you know, that's not enough. What's your take? Sure, so it was 5% for a period of time, was not funded. It then was funded last year statutorily at 1.7%. The governor is doubling that to three, three point, a little over 3.4%. So we're now in a situation where there's going to be more money that's general fund money. And I can't stress that really enough because what that then does do is it allows us to do things that we could not normally do through federal funding where there's restrictions. Right, and the great unknown now is the Affordable Care Act. What's going to happen with that? that is that kind of hindering your pathway forward, not knowing what's going to happen when it comes to Medicaid expansion and Absolutely. ACA? Absolutely not. Really? Absolutely not. No, it's, it's moving forward how we go. Look, we know that there's a population in the state, many of which are on the Affordable Care Act. Whatever is in place, we have to ensure that those that are getting services, some sort of services, and mental health services continue getting those. Let me ask you a personal question. We're almost done. What has this job been like for you? You must have had to be talking to everybody that's seen some pretty bad things. Parents, things like that. That's the hardest part of the job. You, you really hit the nail on the head talking to parents who lost a child, parents who are now grandparents raising young people. Look, I'm, I'm a father of a 21-year-old and a wife who's actually pregnant. You know, Congratulations. So, thank you, thank you. So I live it and understand it every day when talking to them. Yeah, is, is it motivating to do that? Is that what keeps you going? Can't not be. It really can't not be. It, you know, we have to, for all of us, you had said your daughter, we have to make sure that we're doing the best job we can. And we can't, you know, I'm monolithically focused on this every day, all day. All right. Well, I know I appreciate you coming by, and I know that you've been on the job working hard. So best of luck to you moving forward. Keep us posted. Okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to see you, James. Barrow. The drug czar, what's your real title? Governor's We don't have time. Oh. <laughs> Drug czar, it's good to see you. Thank you. We'll be right